record. Okay, great. So I'd like to introduce Andrew from the Humanists, who's going to um, talk about search kit in Civi CRM. So over to you, Andrew. Uh, right, hello. Um, uh, yes, yeah, William said. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, the director of IT at uh, Humanists UK, which is a uh, charity in London. Um, we uh, represent uh, uh, hum humanism across the UK and sort of ad advocate for that. Uh, one, one of the things you may have heard of us is we run the network of non-religious celebrants who do um, non-religious funerals, weddings, namings across the country. Uh, that's, that's sort of one of the areas we do. We do a lot of political work and uh, uh, various various other things. And CIVI is very much at the, the heart of our data. Um, we've been using it for about 10 years, uh, coming up, yeah, coming up 10 years. Um, we've got about 300,000 contacts in there um, and it, yeah, it powers our, powers our uh, sort of sits, sits on WordPress on our website. I think we, we were one of the first people to use WordPress and we funded some of that integration work. Uh, and it, yeah, it runs our membership, it runs um, all of our donations, it runs events. Uh, we do uh, school and we, we run people who go into schools and hospitals and prisons. Um, so we run, uh, we use ca the cases system for that. Uh, and we, yeah, we touch sort of most, most areas of civic. We don't really use civic campaign or pledge, but the sort of the built-in, the, the built-in things we use, use most, most of them. Um, and when SearchKit turned up, uh, well, was first float, floated, um, which I think was a couple of years ago now, we started using that. Uh, well, we funded some of the development of that, particularly to do with smart groups. Um, and we've been sort of playing with it since. Um, so I'm going to do sort of general introduction to, to search kit and, and uh, I'll talk about how we use it a bit, but also just the sort of things it can do. Um, I wrote a blog post uh, for the Civi website a few, uh, how long ago is it? A couple of, couple of months ago. And we talked about where, where I went over some of the more, um, uh, the fancier searches we've managed to put together after a bit of, bit of, bit of trial and error. Um, but we'll start uh, just sort of looking at at search kit and why um, I'm quite 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 enthusiastic about it because it's quite a it's quite a good piece of tech it's very sort of nice nicely written um, and it makes using Civi in practice uh, quite a lot well not a lot nicer but quite nice so I've shared the screen there hopefully you can uh, you can see that we should move you over there yeah um, that's great that all that'll ping okay yep that looks great okay so search Kit is basically, in essence, a uh, a way of searching Civi data and uh, ex and reporting on it, kind of show, showing it um, in tables or other other ways that allows both admins and other people to see it. It is quite a lot. Uh, it is the thing I like about it is that it's snappy. Uh, it's a lot more pleasing to use um, than using uh, like if you go to sort of advanced search. Or search builder, they work and they work very well. It's just um, it's sort of you have a fair few page refreshes and you have to sort of work work, work through those. Whereas search kit search kit itself is just really fast. It's really nice to use. Um, so you're probably used to finding data by using uh, advanced search or using uh, search builder. Um, and one of the uh, Disadvantages with advanced search. I mean, this is what I, I've been telling my staff for years: is you know, use advanced search. And they, they get on pretty well with it. But we have um, a current count: one hundred and thirty custom groups and about fourteen hundred custom fields. So this section in particular um, is colossal, and the page just ends up being sort of sort of gigantic. And it's quite hard to to find find the data with where it can be quite hard to find the data within here, especially if you're uh, new to the database and are uh, trying to sort of figure out your way around. Um, Search Builder is uh, pretty good. It's quite quite powerful in what it can do, uh, but can be can be a bit bit fiddly to sort of add add search fields and work out sort of your and or lo logic within there. Um, and also, uh, you do. I do. I, I find it. It's uh, you hit hit the odd bug with Search Builder. Uh, oh yeah, with with Search Builder. 
research kit written from scratch, kind of takes advantage of, um, of, of the amazing API 4 work that's, that's, that's been done in the background, and uh, can do pretty much anything that this uh, advanced search and search builder can do, a couple of exceptions, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, but uh, it can, yeah, uh, and, and a fair bit more, and it's quite a lot nicer to use. So if you go to, um, oh yeah, so first thing to say is that it's not enabled by default. I, the, I, I installed this one yesterday using 5.46 and it wasn't enabled by default. I did think, I think I saw something on Mattermost that suggested that was gonna be enabled quite soon. Um, but it's in uh, system settings extensions and you enable it in there. As soon as it's enabled, um, you get search kit menu here. Now uh, search kit um, in, item in the search menu. And when you go to that, the first thing you'll see is a list of, 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 the, of the searches. And this will make more sense in a second. So first thing we'll do is look at a new search. And this is the interface that you get. Um, now I should mention that in, uh, this has a slightly different layout. Um, in regular, have I got it open? Um, yeah, there we go. In on this, this is the CV demo site, um, and you'll see that uh, the the sort of where where uh, fields are on the right hand side in this one. Um, we use a plugin called CV CRM Admin Utilities for um, which is WordPress only, I think. Oh, well, yeah, it's WordPress only, um, which just rearranges it so it's just uh, where is below. Um, so the interface is, is slightly different, but it's all the same. It's all, all the same field. It's just uh, below rather than rather than over here, just so there's a bit more space for it. So let's do an example, uh, an example search. Um, I think the thing to say here is that uh, SearchKit is designed for sort of uh, power users, people who are, are used to sort of the data which is within Civi. If you're in advanced search, then you get all of the fields sort of shown to you. Um, you can sort of, and you can look around and see what sort of thing there is. Where a search kit, uh, you get a drop down of them all. If you're familiar with the data, that's that, that's sort of no problem. Um, but if uh, uh, I've had this experience with sort of tra training new people, it's worth sort of showing them advanced search first, just so they can sort of see the see the fields that exist. And once they're used to them, then they um, they find this one a bit easier to use. We'll look at some of the different elements of this display in a minute. But for an example, first search, um, we're searching for uh, contacts at the top. And we're going to say um, we're going to say I'm using the CV sample data. So let's look for people whose last name equals uh, Barclay. I think I found a few people like that. So you put that in there. Last name equals Barclay. Hit search, and immediately we've got results. And you saw sort of how how quick that was. It just sort of appears, and it's uh, um, no page refresh. It just sort of uh, it, it it's just there. So by default, it shows contact ID and display name. But over here on the right, you can add any other columns of data you want to see in the results. So let's say we want to put in, uh, we want to see people's uh, birth date. Add that there. Um, the uh, search will blank out because it's sort of new data. Hit search again. And that, and that data is then included. And you can put on any sort of contact data within uh, and, and any any content data within that, that you've got. So let's say we want to put on created date, and maybe let's do like age. Um, and again, yeah, that 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 and that that data then appears. Um, now, one thing that my staff find uh, very much like here is that you can in the actions menu. This is the same actions menu that appears um, for uh, most searches. Um, you know, any search or any, whenever you've got a list of contacts within Civi, uh, you've got this action action menu, but with a couple of extra additions. And one of those is download spreadsheet. And um, you'll know that anyone who's used the Civi export process will know that it's, uh, you know, it's quite, you have to go through quite a few screens and it can be fairly slow to do. Whereas this download spreadsheet, um, hit that and it gives you, sends you straight, uh, you get a CSV file of this data that is within your, uh, within your table immediately, um, and that's super useful. You know, there are some some use cases where it's just 
find find the stuff, export it, and then yeah, sort then sort of carry on in Excel. So we uh, yeah we use that quite a bit. Um, but a lot of, um, the a lot of the power of SearchGit comes from the uh, what you can do in searches here. Uh, you can do a hell of a lot. Um, and put it, you can include sort of, and, and on any data from within the database. So let's say I was sort of messing around with this uh, yesterday. So the criteria I sort of came up with were, let's say, do not email is no. Um, and um, let's change this. Let's So rather than saying last name equals Barclay, let's say we want to use a di different criteria. So you've got all these different different options um so you've got not equal not equal to greater than less than greater than inclusive less than inclusive contains if you're sort of familiar with sql um this will sort of make sense otherwise you sort of have to play around with it a bit uh, but immediately this is this is stuff that you can't do in advanced search um, advanced search is great for finding for in sort of inclusive searches where you want to find people who are stuff it's not very good for finding people who, who aren't or uh, or for or for these kind of criteria. Search Builder can do it, um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, all a bit nicer. So let's say we want to find everyone whose last name contains like a P. Search on that. Right there we go. So we've got a list of list of people and quick sanity check. That all seems to uh, seems seems to make sense. Everyone there's surname has got. Got, got a P in it. So obviously you can put in as many criteria here as you want. So you can say do not email equals yes or no. Um, you can you could and you could put in say age is sort of someone on the top who is 46. So you could do that. But you can also uh, start to create more complicated logic. So this and drop down you can change to or at which point you'll end up, uh, you get a little box where you can put in uh, or fields. So we can say, let's say we want to find people whose age is less than 30, or their age is greater than 60. You know, who's interested in people between 30 and 60 anyway? So do that, and we've got, uh, yeah, people, people whose last name contains P, who are one of one of those. Let's ditch that one, see if we get a few more people. No, nope, we get one more person there. And you can build these criteria to be as complicated as you want. Um, you can have another or group here. Um, and you could have an and group within this one. Um, you can it obviously, it can get quite complicated, and after a while, you it's sort of a it's a bit of a uh, start, start starts to melt your brain if it gets too complicated. Um, but the flexibility is there, and compared with doing it in doing that sort of logic in Search Builder, where you'd have to use also include contacts, where you get it's you get more options, um, but it's also just uh, a lot faster and a, and a lot more powerful. One quite nice thing that it can do. Um, this was a, a nice moment when I when I discovered this one is that you can drag stuff between the groups. So age less than thirty, you can drag this up to here, and say you want uh, I want that to be an uh, you know that has to be true, rather than in the or group. Um, and yeah, dra drag them around back and forth. I didn't find anyone. And we'll, and we'll put put that back in there. Another option is not. Um, Use that. I, I I use that one occasionally. Again, that that one can break break your mind. Um, but it's uh, uh that 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 is quite quite useful. So we can say their age is not. Uh, hang on, let me find. I'm just, let's just proof of concept that it works. So yes, yeah, so this this person's age is seventy two. Let's say their um, let's say we don't want their age to be seventy two. Yeah, there we go. So we've only got we've only got the the two people now. Obviously, this is a bit of a weird search, not a very practical one, but you can see the, the the kind of things that you can that you can build using this that that sort of system. Um, and yeah, the drop down contains all contact 
related information. So you've got stuff. Uh, so you've got the the normal uh, normal information like first first name and last name. But when you've got custom fields, uh, contact custom fields as well, they'll be in here too. Um, I think sample data has something called constituent. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, so constituent information most the most important issue. So this is a, cust a custom group that's been created, and these are these are cu custom fields, and they're sort of auto automatically included, and you can yeah can and you can build them in too. So that's sort of building a building a a, a basic search. So let's say that you've built that, um, you found some data, and you want to save that for later. So over the top left, so press search kit two, uh, hit save. And that's now uh, saved and is then visible in the search kit list we saw we saw at the beginning. So if we go back to search kit here, test search kit two is now in, now in the list. Um, and you can then go uh, you can go into it. You can use a menu to clone it um, and various various other things to we'll look at in a sec. If we go back into that, it'll take take you in there, and you can sort of change change the criteria and resave it. Um, and you've got this this search that's there uh, all the time. Oftentimes, um, particularly with contacts, you may want to save this as a smart group too. Um, so over on the left, you can do add smart group, um, and again, uh, it's just sort of there. No page refresh is needed. Tick mailing list, always tick mailing list. And if we save that, we've now got a, a smart group with the results of this search, the, the contact ID column of this search. Uh, and if we then go to manage groups, we should see it in there. Yeah, there we go. Search get to uh, smart group there. And that can be used like any regular group with, with within Civi. So you can use that for a mailing or you can um, uh, start, start. You know, any way that groups are relevant within within Civi, you can just include this um, behind the scenes. It's all sort of handled transparently. So uh, to sort the rest of Civi, it looks like any other in, any other smart group um, that was created by Advanced Search or whatever. It's just a sort of list of a list of people, um, and that's again, you'll, anyone who's sort of used to using Civi will note that that's quicker than sort of using the actions drop down and, uh, and cre creating a new, new smart group that way. And that's part of why it's uh, another another reason this this is so um, pleasing to use. It's just it's just snappy and quick and you can just sort of work work through what you want want to do. So that is a that's a sort of normal search for for contacts. And that's often uh, often what what it's kind of that you know contacts are a fairly important search, but there are lots of other things that you want to search for in Civi, um, be it contributions, memberships, event participants, things like that. So if we make a new search at the top, search for contacts. In this dropdown, you can choose other um, en en entities within within Civi. Uh, so let's say we want to do contributions. Again, you get all of the uh, the contribution fields that would normally appear in well that do appear in fine contributions. Let's have a quick quick look at those. So contribution fields, uh, this is the sort so, sort of stuff that's associated with contributions. So the important things tend to be the date, the financial type, um, its status, excuse me, uh, and payment method and things like that. So once you sort of know what 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 those are? Uh, it's quite easy to say. Okay, so I want the received dates. Uh, date received. Um, dates are quite good in search kit, so you can get a bunch of options with these. So you can either choose a particular date and time. Um, again, with all of the uh, the criteria, so it doesn't equal this date, which is greater than. You can also use the date ranges. Um, you've probably seen this uh, quite helpful um, list of all the sort of different ways you can um you, you can find find dates uh i don't know about you but all of these are useful at one point or another i often think i wonder if everybody else do that and i normally can there's normally normally something in there which which, which do, does it so let's say uh previous calendar 
year on that work. Yeah. So we search for contributions. Oh, and let's let's say that their status is completed. So yeah, so now we've got a list of contribution IDs. And as with contacts, you can add whatever other data you want. So let's put in total amount and the date received. Um, and we can also put in the contact ID of the other person who did it. So now you've got a list of all contributions from last year. Um, and again, you can download them to a spreadsheet if you want. Uh, our finance team find this very useful. They put together a search that finds, th finds things they need, and they drop it down into Excel so they can start doing finance things. It goes into um, uh, whatever wizardry they use to uh, to, to get think get all the books to balance in Sage. Um, they uh, they get all the data in that way. So. Um, yeah. So you've got all these, these the, all the various different uh, entities that you can, that you can search for. But where SearchGeek is really clever is being able to link them together. Now, if you're say if you're familiar with SQL, this will make sense, um, sort of inherently. Um, if not, uh, it's you you play around with it, then you'll sort sort of sort of see how it works. Um, I'll show. You, I'll sort of show it to you, and I'll explain it a bit more. So you can then you can link in the, the contribution contact. So at the moment, as we said, this list contains fields relating to contributions, and that's all that's in there. So the, the things that we saw on the find contribution page. But if you link in the contribution contact, it's going to say um, behind the scenes. Search kit is basically saying, right, who what is the con who is the contact who made this contribution, and what is all of their data. So now our drop down list doesn't just have contribution data, it has quite a lot more. It has all of the data related to the contact, so their birth date or their um, for their first name and last name. So we could, again, we could put in our previous criteria of last name contains P and nobody. That's no fun. Let's not do that. Let's say their age is uh, less than 30. That work? Oh, man, age, age is less than 60. There we go. Got some people, clearly in the sample data, uh, young people don't donate, to, don't donate to charities at all. So what we've, yeah, what we've done is rather than just doing contribution search, we're kind of searching on contribution data and the contact data, uh, which is, well, well uh, hopefully the, the the sort of the benefits of that are quite are, are quite obvious. You can bring in um, whatever data you want, and you can show it too. So we can set we can see their uh, we can bring in their birth dates, or we can bring in their first name, and that's just included in the search columns, like any uh, like like any other search. And again, you can download it, or um, I don't think that I didn't show you this actually. Um, if you, as as in any normal sort of city search, uh, you can con contact, uh, you can use the, start again, you can, the actions menu um, allows you to do other things. So you can export them or send receipts or or, 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 or whatever it is. Uh, yes, oh, oh, oh comment it, that's nice. Um, yeah, the age field is, uh, that that is quite useful. Um, it's amazing how often uh, people are uh, calculating it from just the date of birth. People just errors happen there, so it just have it just it just it just takes away one more one more place for errors to occur. That one. Um, so one of the things that we we do at Humanist UK is uh, sometimes we we start from a contribution and we want to find we need information about the contributions contact, but we also want information about the the, the person's membership. Are they a member of Humanist UK? And you can chain these uh, the people that you bring in. So from contributions, we got to contact. But from contact, we can go to uh, contact memberships. And that comes in as well. You end up with a, a giant list here, but that's fine if you sort of uh, if you know what you're you're looking for. So um, 
scroll down so we can say membership status equals current. Now, I don't know if there is anybody in this database who's going to fit that description. Uh, no, there probably isn't. But you can see that you can start to bring in data from pretty much e everywhere on Civi as long as it's linked, you know, as long as it's sort of sensibly, sensibly link, linked together, which it um, almost always will be because it's quite, you know, it, that inherently in a database, things are, thing, things are link, linked together nicely. Uh, so you can create quite complicated reports. Um, we haven't, uh, well, so we changed our reporting structure at Humanist UK a few months back and uh, I had a flood of requests for finding this sort of stuff. And pretty much I could get, SearchKit could do almost all of it. Um, sometimes you have to play around. Uh, I do recommend taking it slowly when, when adding, when bringing in these different uh, different entities. Um, do it bit by bit, search as you go and make sure that uh, the right the right sort of data is appearing um, and add, add, add new ones as you go. Um, but yeah, you can start, you can do, you can see the sort of complicated searches. And when you start to do all groups or um, indeed not groups, uh, you can search for we found we can search for almost almost every everything we need to. Um, so, the thing I was going to say, yeah. So it's, it's sort of designed. It's built for more power users. Um, if you are, say, if you're familiar with SQL, it it, uh, it makes more sense than if you're not. Um, and I found that my staff. Uh, they, well, what we did was we wrote uh, a little course called Introduction to Entities, um, where we basically described each of these entities as they, we told staff to think of it as a, a separate spreadsheet. You've got a sheet of contacts, you've got a sheet of contributions, you've got a sheet of, mem a sheet of memberships. And we sort of, and we just sort of explained how data was li linked across them. And that was the sort of mental model that we, we tried to create. Uh, staff who came in without that got needed a fair, fair, fair bit of help but people who, who had who sort of un, uh, knew about these entities in the first place um sort of were figured it out fairly quickly um so uh yes we've we, we pushed ahead with sort of uh, making all uh, making all of our staff do this sort of et, 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 entity training just to sort of explain what how what, what these are <laughs> what, what are these things when you look when you look down the list and why aren't why isn't it all one thing um, yeah, so I said at the beginning, mentioned a couple of things it can't do. Um, these aren't things that it uh, fundamentally is unable to, it just doesn't do yet, um, which is just worth worth mentioning. Uh, so one thing is it can't currently find people in an area. So on advanced search, you can do, um, oh, can't this one. That's weird. Uh, there's a find people. Oh, it might be to do with geocoding, mustn't it? Yeah. There's a there's a if you've got sort of geocoding turn on, you can say find everybody within ten miles of of London, something like that, based on their latitude and longitude. Search kit can't do that one as yet, um, but I have seen people on um, the Civi Matamos talking about uh, developing that one, so I think that one's on route. Um, another thing you can't do quite yet is uh, let me get some people. You can't send data through to a mailing quite yet. Um, this is a contribution search, isn't it? Uh, yeah, in a context search. You may be familiar if you've got a, you've got a smart group, um, you can do normally do email and you can send it through to CV mail. Can't quite do that with that that with this yet. Um, again, I think that 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 one's coming, but it's easy. It's perfectly easy enough to just save it as a smart group up here, uh, and then uh, use that smart group in. Um, in, in in a mailing as you would as you would normally. Um, so that's yeah that's sort of the 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 sort of sweep of of of, of search kit initially. I'm going to mention a couple more um, advanced things. I think I've done about done about half an hour, but with five more minutes, I'll just show you some of the the, the sort of fan fancier stuff that it can do, um, which we've which we we've used we've used quite a bit. Um, so one thing to note, first thing to note that we find quite useful is that firstly, you can uh, send the URL. Um, we quite often are copy pasting these URLs onto Slack 
Um, but if you've got a brand new search, so if I just create a new one, uh, so if we create a brand new search for whatever last name contains F, the uh, URL at the top, the parameters, are that they, they are all that is needed to sort of recreate this search. So sometimes you're creating super temporary ones. It's only ever going to be needed once. You don't really want to save it into the search kit list. Um, so I will build this. I will build a search that does this, and then I'll copy paste this and send that to someone, and then they can bring up uh, when they open this. What well, if we copy that, paste it there, so open the search kit uh, with those with those criteria in place, um, and that's without saving it. That's just all come straight from the URL. Um, so that's quite useful sometimes, just to avoid. Um, filling up the list of searches um, with uh, with sort of one one time things. Another thing you might have noticed is that when we save a search, so um, as soon as we save it, uh, top right, it'll pop up with view results. And that creates a uh, so a dedicated page which just show, just shows the results. So if you've got staff who aren't going to be using SearchKit and they're likely to sort of get confused by the interface, or if you just want something that's a bit cleaner and tidier, you can send them this link and they'll be able to see the data. Um, if you're using the Civi form builder functionality, I won't go into this. I won't sort of get, go into this one, um, but you can put fields at the top that will filter this data. So you can you could put something you could put like first name uh, and only find um, Felicia at the top. I've had I did make one actually um, just to show you what that looks like. Uh, is that it? Yep. Give me a second. Our view page. There we go. Um, so with this data. We've got whatever the search criteria was that I, I used to create this. And then if I put in last name, I can type in Blackwell. And it will then filter this data by to show only Dr. Princess Blackwell. So you can create these little this sort of forms. Um, that's what I think that's a bit more beta at the moment than is SearchKit. SearchKit is, is pretty um, pretty solid now. I think a form is uh, I th I, think I saw that yeah the aim is to sort of target that this year and improve that but that's something that's that's possible um and is yeah there are some some use cases where that's exactly what my staff need is to have a big list but also just be able to filter it quickly um and the final thing to mention is that you may have noticed that within this page there's this group by option and group by uh Again, if you're familiar with SQL, this is this will um, collapse your data down. Well, let's say if we've got in this data, we've got Felicia Reynolds, who has made all of these different contributions of these these different amounts. But what we actually want, we're not interested in the individual amounts. We want to know how much she's donated in total. Um, so if I just clean this up a little bit, see if I can get this working. Um, so if we were to group by contact ID, like that, I know I did do it. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think mine has a. Oh yes, I did have to do this on the on the demo site because mine one wasn't happy for some reason with that. Um, let's say we do a vision search uh, for. Oh yes, on the right. There we go. Total amount. No, um, they received in um, previous calendar year. There we go. Uh, so we'll put in their contact ID as well. And the total amount. And let's have the display name. All right. Okay. So in this example, we can see 
uh, uh, Wagner K69 has got these, these four contributions. If we group by the contact ID, then at its simplest, we can say we want the total amount to be the sum. And we can see that, yeah, Wagner K69 has now got $200. It's added up the don his, his donations and put them, um, and he now only has one row where he had like five or six rows before. Um, grouping is a bit more of a, com bit more of a complicated concept, but SearchKit can, can, can do it. And you can, uh, yeah, you don't have to show the sum of these. You could just show a list of them. Um, so in this case, we would see, oh, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I want a list of those. Um, I've done that quite right. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, so we can see that we, we only have one row in the, in the, in, in the data, uh, and we can see all, all of the different, um, different contributions they've made. So grouping is uh, super powerful. Um, one of the things we use that for, uh, well, uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have our celebrants who do their um, uh, their funerals and weddings and namings, and they report them to us. Um, so it's very easy for us to create a, a list of all of our celebrants and how many funerals have they done in the last in the last couple of years. Uh, I can then save that as a uh, I save that as a search. Um, and once it's saved, you get this view results. I can then send that to our director of ceremonies, and all she has to do is go to that page, and it's got live data showing the number of ceremonies that have been taken over the last three months, and it's always there. Uh, so yeah, group group, group by um, worth investing the time in playing with it. It is uh, quite if you're not not familiar with it. The first time I I sort of. Um, uh, met, messed around with grouping, it's uh, it's it's quite confusing, but it is worth the effort. Uh, and the the interface for doing it in here is quite good. You can do pretty much everything you 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 need to be able, need, you need to do. I would say. Um, yeah, there's a fair bit more going on in SearchKit. You may have noticed these sort of drop downs and the things you can do with data. So you sort of pull out the um, you can sort of manipulate the the the, the data that you're looking at, um, and there's even at the end, there's a having clause which says, right, when once I have added up all of the, when I when I've got this search for uh, Wagner K, whichever one that was, uh, I only want to show the people who've who've donated over two hundred pounds, having done all the calculations, uh, and that, that that's useful too. Um, yeah, I wrote a, the blog post that I wrote has some of the more well, it has an example of using relationships. Um, uh, relationships, I think, are the most confusing bit. Not because, not because of any failing of search kit, but just because relationships are inherently quite confusing. Uh, but you can do quite, you can do relationship searches that you definitely couldn't do before. Like I, before, I was coding pages to do that sort of uh, relationship search, and now you can do it within a within a search, which has sped up um, uh, sped things up for me no end. Um, and yeah, so I think that's I'm aware I went through that very quickly. Um, but hopefully, it's shown you sort of the sort of the, the things that SearchKit can do, some of the and and the most important kind of co concepts to it. Um, and yeah, so if you've um, got any questions, I'm not I'm not an expert, um, uh, but uh, uh, play, play with it a fair bit so I can do what, say, do what I can. Great, thank you, Andrew. That was really interesting. It's a really good overview. And there's a couple of questions. I've put a, a link to a, a shared document in the chat. I'll just share the link again for anyone who hasn't seen it already. Um, and there's a couple of questions in there. So I was wondering if you could have a go at answering those. I think the first one's been answered already, which is just, can you rearrange the columns um, in the output? Yeah, did I not, did I not show that? Uh, yeah, you can, if you've got the, uh, where's a where's a good search that I've got that's useful? None. I haven't got any left. Um, yeah. So if you've got this one, uh, nobody in it. I'm gonna get rid of that. Yeah. You can drag these around um, and put put these in, put these into any order you want, um, which is again quite useful. Yeah. Because you've got often you want the the contact ID or the name at the beginning. So yeah, quite often do that. 
Um, when creating search forms with multiple entities, the actions menu is based on the primary entities. Uh, yeah, search forms um, I not not so familiar with. I only just thought I started playing around with those. Um, uh, Colma can probably answer that one better than I can. Coleman, are you here and can you answer that? No, it's all gone silent. Uh, yeah, I, I think there were, I, in the CIVI sort of plans for 2022, I think I think I saw that the focus was sort of a form and 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 uh, yeah, do, being able to do sort of super complicated things there. So I would imagine that is that that sort of thing is 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 on route. Great. Did anyone else have any questions? Okay. Well, if there aren't any more questions about search kit, um, I might turn off the recording now and then we can go for a more general discussion. So just give me a, a minute to turn off the recording.